Ladies and gentlemen, a very warm welcome. This is the grandest stage one can have to talk about all things telecom. I would like to welcome on stage uh, the Department of Telecom uh, Telecommunications Secretary, Dr. Neeraj Mittal. A big round of applause for him. He's an IAS officer, but you know what's even more impressive? His educational qualification from IIT Kanpur. He's also a PhD. Uh, he was an IAS. He started his career 35 years ago with uh, CDOT. So he's come a full circle and he comes with himself a big wealth of experience. He joined as a DOT secretary about a month back. Um, and we're really looking forward uh, to all the developments under him. Thank you very much, sir, for joining. How was the day, Dr. Mittal? It's been uh, uh, excellent because we, I don't think we've had so many delegates here in any of the past. I was just checking the last time we had about 30,000 delegates. Today we had 46,000 registrations. So Incredible. it's been awesome. Incredible. Absolutely uh, incredible. And my heart swells with pride. Uh, you know, seeing all this today. Uh, you've just taken over as a DOT secretary about a month back. And India has seen an unprecedented 5G rollout. I remember IMC 2022. It was all about ushering 5G, making India count uh, in the league tables of 5G. Uh, IMC 2023 is all about taking that 5G mandate forward, uh, monetizing it. Oh, we're also now talking about bringing in innovative technology, laying the foundation for innovative technology, laying the foundation for 6G. But you know, sir, as things stand today, this unprecedented 5G rollout has been led by only two companies. Uh, the government has made it very vocal that they want a thriving, competitive uh, market. But the truth of the situation right now is that we've got two players who have run away with 5G layout, one player is yet to start its 5G rollout, and then you've got a PSU company which is now starting its 4G rollout. Uh, how do you feel about this state? Um, we are very proud that the two companies who have led the 5G rollout, they have done it uh, in the fastest time ever possible. We have lakhs of uh, you know, towers and BTSs which have been established. To give 5G coverage to such a large population is not a joke. Uh, I don't think it has been attempted anywhere before except perhaps China. And therefore, you know, they deserve all the applause. They are Indian companies. Uh, at the same time, I think the government also took a very conscious decision and uh, a very bold decision two years ago, saying that India shall not depend on foreign clutches for its critical core infrastructure technology. And that's when the onus was given to the consortium of CDOT, Tejas, and TCS to develop the 4G technology for the India. And they are very well on track. Uh, the Honorable Minister has already, uh, you know, committed in public that, you know, very shortly this will be rolled out. We are very confident that we will not only have a 4G indigenously developed technology, both core and RAN, but we will also have 5G along with it, which will soon, you know, fructify. So I think we are in good shape. Okay. Um, you took charge a month back. What would be your top three priorities if we meet again, same time next year, IMC 2024? What would be, what would have the past one year look like according to you? The Honorable Prime Minister has, uh, you know, laid these priorities very clearly. Even today when he spoke, uh, he, he said that, uh, you know, we have to have a self-reliant India in, in technology. Not only self-reliant, we also want the Indian technology to be part of the rest of the world. And he gave examples about how we were an importer of, you know, mobile phones and we have become an exporter of mobile phones how we were importing equipment, uh, telecom equipment, and we are also now, you know, exporting it. Uh, if you take optical fiber, I was told some 35 million, you know, uh, 
rolls goes out of India as exports. So we are, you know, kind of becoming uh, an exporter. So we want to, one year down the line, we would like to see India exporting in high value added, high IPR products. That would be the, the benchmark. Uh, we would also like to see a lot of manufacturing happening in within India of uh, critical telecom equipment. So high-end routers, uh, optical equipment, uh, you know, the, the software which is required to, you know, develop. We already have an inherent strength of software in, in other services, but telecom software, we haven't had too much expertise. And we are very well, if you go around in IMC, you will see at least three or four companies demonstrating their 4G core which means they have all developed it independently. So I think, you know, these two are really critical at a macro level. But I would also like, as a third priority, that our startups become an integral part of this growth story. So uh, the first one is India garners a higher market share of exporting mobile phones, smartphones. The second one And is, telecom equipment. And telecom equipment. I was going to, I thought that was the second one. Uh, you know. No, no. So, that, so what I said was, you know, export all these, manufacture these. Manufacture critical telecom infrastructure. And the third is to have startups uh, be becoming a critical part of this growth story. Okay. Uh, you know, when we talk about 5G, uh, companies have spent and committed billions of dollars to 5G. Yet all of us are using 5G for free. Uh, companies have not yet got the return commensurate with the investment that they've made on 5G. We don't have that killer 5G app yet. So before we think ahead and look ahead to 6G, don't we need to monetize 5G? And what is the thought process in the industry about monetizing 5G? So um, on 5G, yes. I mean, if you talk to possibly in Europe, somebody whether you know they might say 5g has failed but we are not going to let that happen in india if you see the foresight of our prime minister he announced one year ago that we will have 100 you know 5g use cases labs i don't think anywhere in the world we have established such labs we have established 5g uh, you know test beds in multiple places we are working on 5g standards there are a host of startups who are working on, you know, 5G-led applications. If you look at the, the defining or distinguishing criteria between 4G and 5G, you would realize that, you know, low latency, high reliability, massive machine-to-machine -machine communication, these are, you know, the defining characteristics of 5G which cannot happen, sorry, 4G and 5G which cannot happen in you know, 3G networks. And, sorry, 5G. And therefore, the use cases of them are being developed as we speak by so many players who are there today. The other use case of 5G really happens in an industrial setting and we had a CEO roundtable conference today where they said that Manufacturing, if India has to become a manufacturing station, not just telecom equipment, but general manufacturing of all kinds, and it has to compete in the world, it has to become smart manufacturing. And that can only happen with 5G deployment. And of course, there's going to be a cost to it, but I think India cannot do without doing it. So I think while there is no one killer application, there are hundreds of killer applications out there. It's a matter of time that they develop and we will make sure that they develop. What else was discussed at that CEO roundtable? Well, we discussed a lot of issues. Uh, one of the things was about how to make India a manufacturing destination for uh, the telecom equipment. And, you know, a few things came up about what changes can be made to the, the policy framework, how can ease of doing business be done a little better, how can, you know, the production link incentive scheme could be tinkered a little bit. So very valid and good suggestions were received. The other thing we discussed was about cyber security. Uh, even during the G20, we had massive attacks on Indian IT infrastructure from abroad and from within by foreign players. And we defended all of them 
very vigorously nobody succeeded that goes a lot to say about our capability but there is a lot to be done so we spoke about if there can be a unified secure uh, an architecture for cyber security which is secure by design a uh, zero trust so those are the kind of things we discussed in that round table uh since you know a big thrust of the conversation was around manufacturing and that's clearly your priority make in india for india make in india for the world uh would we be looking to up uh some sort of you know provide some regulatory support financial support uh, to enable that we already have a pli for manufacturing telecom equipment but is there going to be some added policy support so we already have a pli scheme it is uh, at about 12195 crores for a period of 5 years i think we have spent some 3000 crores or something like that so far but uh we intend to so one of the suggestions there was uh, that you are giving it for uh, you know x type of products can you increase it for you know different kind expand of product, the product. expand the uh, the scope of the scheme Uh, and these are the kind of suggestions we are looking forward from you know forums like these where we can make these schemes more meaningful for another suggestion was that you know when you when you give a pli many new players are coming to use this scheme and their scale is small if their scale is small if you give them a 4% or a 6% incentive or their gross revenue that's not enough to compensate for the cost disadvantage which they may have with a big player so i think we have money is enough all we need to do is to tinker the scheme so that it becomes more relevant and we look forward to you know forums like these to make it more relevant honorable uh, minister ashwini um, beshnav also laid out the vision document for 6g he also said that india needs to take leadership in 6g if india indeed needs to take leadership in 6g what would be the things that india needs to do so we already have uh, you know about a year ago i think it was announced to have the bharat 6g alliance uh, it is a consortium uh, of industries and academia and all in other parties uh, that alliance has this responsibility of bringing all the stakeholders together and uh, bring bring a consensus we are also going to have an honorable prime minister i think also mentioned that we are going to have the wtsa conference uh, you know next year in india that's the first time we are going to host it uh, and it's a standards uh, association for you know from the itu india is going to you know present the needs of india and make sure that they become part of the standards so one of the things we were successful in doing it was to include the feature of ubiquity in the 6g uh, framework and many countries especially the united states actually supported india's case why it is important is or why is it that many countries would not support is because if you say ubiquity which means everybody has to be provided with 6g which means more money has to be spent larger capex but india said that you know for a country for us inclusiveness is very important and therefore we push for that and we were able to this is just one example how india has shown leadership in you know bringing 6g to be relevant for indian needs i want to know when i'll get 6g sorry when will i get 6g when will all of us get 6g on our phone yeah uh, well i think you have to start paying for 5g first you said you're getting it free <laughs> did the telecom uh, you know ceo talk about um, you know monetizing 5g you know not from the enterprises but from consumers then maybe charging a premium tariff for 5g did that come up no it did not come up because tariff is something which companies decide on their uh, you know on their competitive uh, pricing basis uh, but i think companies are working feverishly to develop 5g cases um, for example they would like to uh, you know do networks like splicing and you know do the traffic which will be have a separate quality of service so that they can assign priorities to different networks so companies private companies can establish their own uh, you know private networks with different class of uh, you know services which is not possible under the current 
4G networks or 3G networks. So many approaches are going on. Uh, I think uh, we will find companies finding different ways to monetize it. Fair enough. Uh, one final thing that I wanted to talk about is the startup ecosystem. That's your key priority. Get <laughs> India's thriving startup ecosystem into the larger ecosystem. Uh, I think the DOT has three funds, three programs where you fund startups. What has come out of it so far? You've sown the seeds for the last few years. Can you talk about some of the trees to come? So there are <coughs> at least <coughs> 250 or 200 odd startups who are participating here actually. Many of them have been funded by DOT. We have successes in uh, you know, chip manufacturing. Uh, there's a company called uh, Signaltron. Uh, we have uh, you know, <coughs> a company which has become relatively bigger. Uh, it's VVDN. Um, it was also financed under the PLI. We have a company called Logi, and I think it works in health. We have companies who are working in education, in agriculture, all using 5G test cases, use cases uh, in various spheres. So <clears throat> the three schemes which we have have a large, uh, you know, allocation. The first one is TTDF, which has the largest allocation of 500 crores. There are two more schemes, DCIS, and there's another one uh, run by CDOT. So I think government is making sure that there is no lack of money for the startups to be able to you know, participate. I think one of the you know, problems we are working on behalf of startups is to how do they get market access uh, in, you know, in public procurement because telecom is an infrastructure which is highly, uh, you know, large amount of investment is done by public sector. Of course, there are private players as well, and we are going to actually place this problem in front of the private sector as well. They should also take the onus of giving startups some leg space, some, you know, orders to be given so that they can develop this, uh, you know, their order book and grow up the value chain. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Mittal. And now I'm going to open up uh, the floor. So we've got uh, the DOT Seki with us, guys. So if you have any questions, uh, please keep them flowing. Warm regards to all the ladies and gentlemen or guest present here. My name is Ujjwal Sonkar, and uh, we are working on a startup which is based on defense technologies. So we have a novel architecture, which is not anything similar to x86 or ARM-based processors. And we have received uh, a lot of interest from Ministry of Defense as well as the communication industry because uh, in most of the cases when we use the chip architecture, it is either something a foreign company who doesn't uh, give us the total access to use it. So there is nothing which is uh, especially kept in mind about this hardware independency in the architecture domain. So uh, we have uh, as a startup, we do have it, but we need some funding a significant amount good enough to make it something scalable, such as either having a, a foundry within India. Right now it's being manufactured at TSMC. And uh, we want uh, to be hardware independent if we wish to. What do you suggest we as a startup should work? As you said about TTDF as well as others. So do you have anything in special consideration if we have such an important project? And uh, please kindly, I would like to hear your opinions. Like how I, can I cannot respond specifically to your needs, but as I said, the TTDF is available. If it's a telecom related application, we would definitely be happy to fund it. Uh, please apply. The window just closed or I think it has been extended. It has been extended, it is open. Please go back tonight, apply. Thank you. Thank you. Hi. Hello, everyone. Very good evening. Good evening, sir. So uh, I am from TCS, Tata Consultants and Services, as, uh, and I'm working there as uh, AIML lead, data scientist lead. So my question to you, sir, is uh, like, uh, we know that f upcoming technologies are there, 5G is there, 6G is there. But uh, and in 5G, there are enterprise 5G as well, the private networks. And uh, I believe, I firmly believe that uh, AIML is having a crucial role in terms of 5G, in terms of 5G, especially, specifically when we talk about private networks. But uh, in the AML itself, there are generative AI as well, the new hot topic nowadays, which, uh, so how do you see generative AI as a collaborative, collaboration with 5G in private networks? Will it be a boon or will it be a curse? Because why I'm saying so, 
there are certain areas in it like we can explore it more and more but uh, as you know that uh, it, it's an immense thing you uh, might be aware it's, of it's a, it's a 8g upsc question which i will not be able to answer <laughs> <laughs> i think Sorry. you know the answer but yeah <laughs> from from your perspective i just want to know that. i mean I, you know not not specifically about generative ai but i you know i do see that ai is going to be very widely per pervasively used uh, and as technologies evolve as you know technologies become uh, more and more uh, so for example one of the uh, you know revelations to me was today that you know the the way jio has been able to reduce the cost of their phones is that they have been able to take away all the processing to the core and the phone is just a, you know kind of a shell the entire you know processing is happening at the back end at the back end and the, so i think you know the the more more and more processing can happen in 5g and 6g technologies in the core and you can throw all the results on the edge right so i mean i i agree with you that uh, that's going to be the future so i think that's about you know as deep as i can go on generative ai thank you you said that uh, one revelation for you was that how geo was able to cut down costs by doing all the processing at uh, you know outside uh, what else was a revelation for you you're a student for life what else have you learned today that you didn't know uh i think the one of the things which i you know and it never stops uh, me from uh, really becoming fascinated is that there are so many pathways to solve a problem i mean i example? see uh, so for example i saw you know uh, a solution to save fishermen uh, in the sea i saw one solution at bsnl i saw another solution at i think tejas and what were these solutions you want to tell us briefly yeah i mean they are based on uh, you know the the bsnl was a combined solution of um, so as long as so two nautical miles you have this uh, 3g 4g coverage so it uses that till that area after that it you know it switches to satellite the tejas solution was all the way satellite i uh, we have funded i think if i am not wrong we have funded a startup called ignoble in chennai whom we you know help them do a poc with government of tamil nadu they have another yet another solution and i think that is the richness of you know india that you know we given a problem we'll find a solution absolutely thank you very very much uh, dr mithal for joining in and wish you a great tenure as a dot thank session. you so much thank you thank very you. much <laughs>